All right, so today's webinar is Drone to CAD with Carlson Photo Capture. And uh, yeah, so, so you know, we're gonna look at, at you know, how do you accelerate uh, your drone mapping workflows, right? How do you get them done uh, as quickly and as efficiently as possible? Uh, because that's, you know, ultimately drones are a very, an excellent tool for increasing uh, productivity, or they have the potential to do that, right? Collects lots and lots of data very quickly. But you know, where where you you know the rubber meets the road, so to speak, is can you turn that data, that that large volume of data, into a uh, deliverable uh, quickly and easily? So, um, and, and, and that's why, you know, we're here, uh, right? It's, it's, and that's why we built Photo Capture is to, uh, is to make that, that process, um, you know, simple. And, uh, and so with Photo Capture, you know, our motto is simple, easy to use, and, and powerful. Okay, so again, today's focus is on accelerating your drone mapping workflow from drone to CAD. I did want to take just a brief, um, period of time here uh, before we get into the to the nitty-gritty so I'm going to actually bring up a few projects and we're gonna there's gonna be a lot of uh, hands-on uh, um, during today's uh, webinar but I did want to go over some new features that are in uh, Carlson photo capture just in case some of you are not aware um, we like to just kind of bring them up and, and remind people hey there's you, you know we're always working on the product building new capability and new functionality and so I'll just quick go down the list briefly, and and then uh, and then we can get into the the presentation. All right. So uh, I'm guessing most of you know this by now, but uh, in addition to the uh, web-based version of Photo Capture, we also have a standalone desktop version now as well. So uh, one thing we kind of heard over the past couple of years was that, hey, you know, I work in a remote area or I have a work in an area that has a very poor internet connection. Um, or another example might be, you know, I just want the data on my own machine. So uh, there is a, a desktop version of, of Photo Capture now, um, as well as the original uh, cloud version. And I, I did want to take a moment to note that these are identical in terms of capability. So the interface is the same. Uh, the user experience is the same. The only difference is that uh, you can't share de uh, data in the uh, standalone version like you can in the web. So if you wanted to share it with a client um, through Photo Capture, you'd have to do that on the web version. Uh, we did. We we have created a new uh, GCP, uh, or we call it Reference Point now, Reference Point Editing Interface. So not before when you uploaded ground control points and you measured them. Uh, once you measured them, you you couldn't go back and re-measure them. Right, so if you had a bad control point, you'd almost have to start over from scratch. But that is no longer the case. So if you want to add a control point or remove a control point, like maybe maybe the wrong one was measured, um, you can do that now from the uh, reference point manager and, and reprocess your project. Um, so it gives you a lot of flexibility, um, you know, when, when it comes to uh, um, measuring and editing ground control points. Uh, we also added support for local coordinate systems um, and a lot of uh, Carlson EMEA, EMEA projections. Uh, so if you're working on a, on a local system, um, now you just type that into the output coordinate system window of Carlson Photo Capture and, uh, and it will, um, you know, it will work with that those ground control points in a local system. I will say you, you do need to work in a local system, you do need ground control points. Um, that is a requirement for uh, using the local coordinate system option. And the other requirement is that, you know, you cannot have rotated uh, systems, okay? So it has to be aligned with, um, you know, uh, geodetic north. Uh, the next thing is that you can overlay uh, PDFs, okay? so if you have, uh, I mean, obviously you can import DXF files and whatnot, but if you have PDF files 
that uh, of design plans or um, you know different whatever that might be uh, you can overlay these in the 2d viewer okay so if it's past or present design plans and you want to compare it to that site on that day um, and look at, at, at differences uh, you can do that with the overlay manager and then the last um, the last couple of things would be, um, you know, we now also fill holes. Um, you can fill holes in ortho images. So if you've got like a, a lake, for example, in the middle of your project or a really dense forest or something like that, um, you know, we will, uh, we use the uh, images over those areas to, to fill them in, um, even if the, the 3D reconstruction is, is poor because, of, again, a, a big lake, for example. All right. Um, any any questions on 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 that before we get started? And I can't see your question, so um, either Ben or Louise, if there are any, just, just let me know as we go. All right. So that's that's uh, we're 15 minutes in. So let's get into the actual meat of the presentation. So to do that, I'm going to switch back to Carlson Photo Capture. And actually uh, demonstrate some some new workflows. Okay. Now it's important to note that I I am demonstrating this on a a live project. So I've got this sample project up, and uh, I'm opening it up right now for everyone to to see. So this is what we call the reference point manager, okay? So when you, uh, when you bring in your ground control points, um, you will see something like this, and it's called the reference point manager. And uh, this is what we call the sparse, uh, the sparse point cloud. And so what I was going to show you, I mentioned that we had changed things up with editing, um, but I wanted to introduce two new concepts before we get into more of the, uh, the mapping uh, drone to CAD side of things. First, if you come over here to the left side to the reference point manager, I'm going to make this full screen just to give myself a little bit more real estate. And I come over here to the ground control point icon over here. So this is where you can view, correct, or edit reference points. And so you can see here that I have in this project, uh, if we zoom out a little bit, we've got three ground control points. Or I'm sorry, two ground control points, one checkpoint. Okay. And so you can you can you can uh you can see here that the different icons for the checkpoint versus the ground control. But here on the left hand side or on the right hand side now where my screen is, um, you can see that I've got a ground control point here on the edge of um this paint stripe, which in general I, I do not recommend something like that. Um unless you've got like a, a paint mark to, to document it. But you can see here uh, the icons, I've got this ground control point, reference point type is in this case a checkpoint, and then here we've got a ground control point. But this is what I wanted to show you is now you can edit, all right? So if I want to add another point, I simply come over here to this plus button and I'm going to add it uh, manually, all right? Now, if you know the, the 3D coordinates you would, of that control point, you would type them in here, or you could import a file as well. But I'm gonna take this point to introduce a, a new concept to you, which is called a, a tie point, okay? So if I, if I hover over this or I click on it, you can see I've got ground control point, I've got checkpoint, and I've got tie point. So I'm gonna make this a tie point, and I'm gonna call this tie TP1. So TP1, all right? Now, what is a tie point, you might ask? Uh, and how is it different from a ground control point and a checkpoint? Um, so that's what I wanted to quick go over because these can actually really, really improve the quality uh, in some cases of projects, right? And that's, and that's where you typically, when I talk about efficiency and, and being efficient in this uh, drone to CAD workflow, you know, the projects that go smoothly, uh, you know, where, where there's no issues, right? You're, you're gonna be efficient, right? You've got a workflow down, but then something pops up, like maybe it's a very, it's a tree covered area, or there's a lake in the middle of your project. And as a result, you're not getting 
maybe the accuracy near the lake that you want, um, or, or you need to refine the, the quality of this, um, of this reconstruction. And that's where tie points can be really valuable, okay? So just to show you here, I'm going to, um, I'm going to add in these tie points. And then I would, uh, <clears throat> I would, <clears throat> I would start measuring them uh, in the images um, to further refine uh, the quality of those tie points or the quality of the solution. So if we skip back to our, our presentation briefly, um, oops. Did I not uh, add those in here? There we go. It's taking a while for something. For some reason, it's, it's very slow on my end. Um, but if we look at, you know, what what are tie points? So well, we know what a ground control point, right? And, and in in that case, you need to know what the three D X Y Z is of that control point. And, and we use ground control points, right, because it helps improve the, the 3D accuracy of your photogram, of the mapping solution, okay? So that, that ground control point, we use that to, establish, to relate the photos uh, to the, the 3D mapping, the horizontal and vertical uh, mapping datum that you're working in. Now, the second type of uh, reference point that we previously had was a checkpoint. Right, and in that scenario, again, just like a ground control point, you need to know the 3D X Y Z of that uh, of that checkpoint, but it does not improve the mapping solution. Right, it, it's an external uh, reference point that's only used to determine the, the overall quality of your mapping of your mapping solution, overall accuracy. Okay, you can think of them as validation points. Okay, so. Ground control point, we need to know that 3D XYZ, it's used in the, in the mapping solution to improve accuracy. Checkpoint, need to know 3D XYZ, but it does not improve. It's just a validation point um, to determine accuracy. And then the, the newest thing that I, that I was showing you is, is what we call a tie point, okay? So using tie points, can you don't need to know the 3D XYZ, right? It could just be an arbitrary feature in the in the uh, mapped area, right? So it could be a it could be the top of a stop sign, or it could be a sidewalk corner. Um, you don't you don't need to have a 3D coordinate on it, but you just need to be able to make image. You know, you have to be able to make image observations and say and identify that reference point in multiple images, and then that will help improve uh, the mapping solution. Okay, and <clears throat> so I'm going to switch back again. And uh, again, go full screen. Um, so you can see here, I've got this this tie point. And uh, re remember, it doesn't. It can be really anything in this in this map, right? Uh, so I just find something that's that's clearly identifiable as a feature. So in this case, I'm going to pick the base of this uh, uh, the base of this light pole down here. So just measure right here and then go to the next image measure that again and now you'll see that a whole bunch more images appear okay and so now we can just cycle through these images and and figure out okay uh, and, and measure that that particular uh, reference point Okay, that that tie point. All right, so so I, I described what a tie point is and and why we use it, um, and I just wanted to bring that up because it is a new feature and uh, and I thought it would be it'd be useful in case you see it uh, uh, pop up on your screen next project you process like hey what is this new reference point feature and, and why would I use it? But let's uh, let's switch over to the survey canvas and then get into okay. We've created our ortho, we've created our point cloud and our, our 3D mesh. How do we get to an actual deliverable, 
okay? So I'm gonna switch over and we're gonna, um, we're gonna start on that. Hey, Ben. Yep. So we went for the project to load. Uh, we have Rich Maher uh, with a question. His question is, does Carson's drone processing software take advantage of the RTK data that something like a DJI 4 Pro RTK system offers? You, you, you would Absolutely. talk about that for everybody. Yeah. Yep. So uh, we, not only do we support DJI RTK, DJI RTK, but we also uh, support Autel RTK and, 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 you know, many more vendors. But yes, if you upload a project from a, from a Phantom 4 Pro uh, RTK or any other uh, RTK capable model from a DJI, we parse that uh, image data that's in, uh, contained in the exit or in the image. Um, so we know, hey, this is an this is an image that has RTK data associated with it. And then we use that to refine the accuracy of the map that we're generating. Okay, so what we actually in that data, it it it, it gives the estimated accuracy of each photo um, position. So we extract that information out of each image, and that's how we actually um, we can we can essentially create sky control points at each photo position using uh, that that uh, metadata from the DJI or for or from Autel um, for that matter. So that's a that's a very affirmative yes. Uh, and and we I mean to be to be candid with it for everyone on this call, we very much recommend um, RTK capable platforms for the sole reason for the sole reason that the consistent, you know, your workflow won't change dramatically, but from a consistency standpoint, you don't have to worry so much about, well, where am I putting my ground control points, right? And do I, do I, do I have good distribution? Do I have control points on the edge of my project? Do I have control points in the center of the project? Um, that is, is uh, from a, from a consistency standpoint with the RTK, that's, that's really what it gets you is you don't have to worry about those uh, those problems uh, happening anymore. 